Hello, welcome back to Blender Sushi Life Noting. In this episode, we're gonna be playing around with the uh, Blender Cycles nodes, and this is actually gonna be kind of roughly based on this uh, Joy of Vex. This is actually supposedly for Houdini, and with Houdini, they have this uh, Vex code, kind of like a expression language that you can use. Uh, instead of using nodes, you can apparently just use like a kind of like codes and with this simple codes expressions you can basically pipe for example in this case pipe the normal of every point and then pipe it into the color pipe the position of a mesh into the color and you can do a lot of interesting advanced stuff uh, this is Houdini stuff but uh, we know that Blender with a stretch out add-on or animation nodes add-on, we can kind of do similar. But Blender in itself, without stretch out or animation nodes, we can actually use uh, cycles render. And with cycles, we have something quite similar. I'm gonna show you really quick. So this is cycles, and we're gonna be dealing with normal and points. Actually it's gonna be geometry cycle geometry nodes this is something that's quite abstract that um, I will explain at later stage using stretch add-on how everything is works so anyhow I'll start with a stretch and generate um, a torus for example I'm just gonna be outputting a 3d object so polygon Vertices, polygons go into faces. Um, you can see also there's a normal output here. We don't we don't worry about that for now. We're just gonna generate uh, this torus geometry that we can still change at any time. We can change the resolutions, things like that. And we're gonna switch to cycles right away and give it a material. So cycles by default give us this uh, diffuse and then material output nothing too fancy but let's see let's have a look here um, let's see if we can pipe in uh, the normal of an object into the color or position into the color is this something that we can do easily um, with cycles yes apparently uh, we can use geometry nodes so this geometry is not it's not the same to object info okay or with object info we have the locations which is um, the location for an object if you want to randomize based on object locations we can do it using this object info but with geometry apparently uh, we have position and normal this guy is actually the position of every point and the normal of every point so this is actually really powerful what I mean is that if we just plug the position into the color you will see right away we have this uh, interesting color similar to this guy right here so of course this is like vex it's a it's using this expression uh, in Houdini it's a it's much more complex, much more sophisticated. Uh, we can kind of doing the same thing here. So based on the position of the mesh in 3D, we can get that color. This will work actually for any kind of geometry. We, we just use the same material and you're gonna get different result. And let's try also on a cube cube you can't see nothing much because we need to perhaps uh, subdivide the cube or well actually even though the cube doesn't have um, any kind of resolution uh, it's not like subdivided cube if I try to subdivide it we still get the same kind of color so this is actually kind of working not in the point level is is much deeper than that it's working down uh, at the shader level so the position and the normal works 
you can use the normal of the objects you can even use the pointiness uh, not very apparent um, the tangent also but don't worry about that we're just gonna look at the position and the normal for now let's see if we can do something that's a little bit more complex let's jump into joy of vex number two right away here um, I think Matt Estella is using sign functions to give this kind of a repeating value um, but it's also using the length of the positions um, let's see if we actually have vector mass length or distance here we don't actually have that mm, so we can use however we can use separate at XYZ for example get the position separate it and then here we can use mass function and simply use a sine wave for example and then combine it here and let's see what we're gonna get so yeah something interesting has happened so like I said this is more like in the shader level slightly different to this guy right here which is more like in the point level uh, maybe in another video I will be using sphere chalk add-on and works on the on the vertex level well let's see what's gonna happen if I actually change the value okay this is sine wave and let me try again sine functions plug this into that guy we don't suppose not, uh, not able to see that other value but uh this that will not give anything but if we are using multiplier here we can do the repeat so this is the like doing the repeat in the using the position x of the geometry that's why we get the stripe in x axis but we can change this to y or to z or oh, apparently using two value is actually giving some kind of effects already oh because i'm using the multiplier pardon me so this is the x this is the y and this is the z you can see the effects on all this 3d geometry no matter whether it's suzanne or box or torus with the torus we can always go back here change the radius things like that increasing or reducing the resolutions doesn't change much the shader for this geometry still looks the same because like i said this is more like in the shader level it's not on the vector or not in the points level okay geometry separate we can also use the normal and we can also use the pointiness we can't really see it um, let's see what else we can do here combine XYZ maybe we can use multiple so use X for the sign plug it into the Y same thing the Y Maybe for simplicity, I should plug the X over there, the Y here, and the Z here. We can get us this fancy looking shader right away. So this is working in the shader level. Just a X, Y, Z position pipe into um, the color. But we are doing some math operation here. Sine. We can also use cosine. 
or other you know tangent whatever use for simplicity just use sine for now the other value doesn't really do anything so position and normal the normal actually if we if it's for the box seems like it's gonna do different thing if I if I actually modify this geometry you know like adding subdivisions it's gonna give a different color so this is quite interesting right based on position and based on the normal using cycles we can really get a similar thing happening here of course uh, Houdini and Vex and all that is a uh, it's much more uh, sophisticated I guess you can do a lot more but you can try using math functions and get a quite interesting result you can even animate it I think if you can kind of use a vector math and then maybe add two vector together so cycle is really quite powerful in that regard you just I, I think sometimes it's too abstract you can't really see the value here uh, there is no output or visual how to visualize the color you, you kind of you can tell using the RGB um, one thing though one thing you can you can plug this into displacement and you can actually displace objects this way uh, not really apparent now or oh, I need to render it out so yeah it does this displays uh, displacement and this is really cool even though currently the displacement is like um, there is no proper directions maybe in the next live noting I'm gonna talk about displacement once again and try to displace the object using the the normal so there's a the position and there's the normal yeah normally we we like to displace something based on the normal so in this case it's still like kind of like wacky we're just displacing based on what value uh, okay this actually seems to be displacing it properly based on the normal or maybe not but I'm gonna maybe come back and discuss this once again but using a proper displacement for now it's just just look at the color and just get this logic you can use any geometry apply a shader into the geometry no matter what geometry you can then use the position and the normal in the shader level and then you can manipulate it using math with nodes here cycle nodes and plug it into the color or plug it into the displacement right displacement is uh, doing it in render time at render times so it's much more complex but yeah there you go this is uh, something that will render it will also animate like I say if you use uh, combine XYZ use this and use time do we have time here uh, frame oh actually we don't have time but we can use a value we can animate this is like a really fancy shader that uh, it's not easy to recreate but because of the we are able to access the position and the normal of the geometry we can create um, a shader like this and this is actually something that's uh, being demonstrated here there is a few video talking about Joy of Vex and Houdini. It's a it's kind of similar thing. Believe it or not, it's a the things you can do here even with a simple a bunch of nodes that's being offered by Spare Talk animation nodes or cycles. You can do quite advanced um, shader. Um, yeah, a lot of things basically. It's a it's a for me. I'm actually kind of trying to learn Houdini while also trying to do it in Blender 
because Blender is open source and Houdini, you need a license. And yeah, it's a, it's a kind of a, I, I don't actually disregard Houdini. Houdini is, can be really complex and really, really powerful, like really powerful because Houdini has particles and all this, those stuff. Blender currently at this stage, it's much simpler, much more humble, even with a add on like um, spread talk, you only have a bunch of nodes. With Houdini, you have probably like thousands or 10,000 or much more functions. Um, eventually, I will be using Houdini again, but uh, Blender is always the tool that I have and I can use at any time. I don't need to worry about license. I spent thousands of dollars on Houdini license at some point, but few versions later, I couldn't use Houdini anymore on my MacBook Pro. Even this is like latest MacBook Pro, Houdini just doesn't support it. So I, this is something that I, I always feel kind of sad. Um, but anyhow, I'm gonna use Houdini at some point with a different license, of course. But this one, with, with Blender, I can use it anytime. So there you go. That's a quick look at cycles and how you can use objects, um, position, object uh, normal, or geometry normal, rather, and then use it for shader uh, to make this uh, kind of fancy shader. Thanks again for tuning in, and I'll see you next time. Thank you. Bye.